I'm Graham Spinks and I founded my company 22 years ago and we have offices in St Ives and I employ three people and there are others whose livelihood depends on the company. I founded the company in order to explore different techniques of writing. 22 years ago it was very exciting, the internet was just coming into being and there were lots of exciting new media, CD-ROMs, Video was becoming much cheaper and easier to produce and I wanted to explore all those different methods and that is essentially what we've done and it's been a very exciting time to be working in those kind of media. We worked a lot with a lot of manufacturing clients. Early on I did a lot of work with Reuters. The biggest part of their business at the time was providing and distributing financial data. We did some very exciting publicity schemes for them, the launch of the Euro, the millennium bug. I was one of the people who made money from it. <laughs> the thing about sales and marketing, people don't like doing it because they feel that they're twisting the arms of the people on the other end. If I'm selling something I absolutely believe in, it's actually really exciting and I'm bringing them good news, bringing them something useful to. I was fortunate to, enough to have a lot of energy and enthusiasm for the kind of work we were doing and I was able to share that so this was not a slippery, slimy salesman. This was somebody raving, <laughs> raving about um, recent projects. When I've been making sales to large organizations, I've been very aware of the question of who it is I'm selling it to. Am I selling it to the organization? Am I selling it to the manager? Am I selling it to the people who are going to benefit from it? Nine times out of ten, if you try to make a sale to an organisation on the basis that it's going to be value to the organisation, you will get nowhere very fast. If you can get a manager excited about developing his team, uh, you're on to One of the ways in which we've met potential clients has been through having stands at an exhibition. Now, stand at an exhibition, even a, even a small stand, is likely to cost four or five thousand pounds and on top of that of course you've got the costs of the accommodation, the transport, the moving, lugging your kit and everything up there. So you could have a bill for say six, six and a half thousand pounds. So while you're on that stand for your three days you absolutely have to be totally engaged in trying to make sales or so at least trying to make sure you've got the contact list that you can go home and convert to sales. So one time I was caught out, I showed our software to a head of training and one of her minions they asked me if they could have access to the software so that they could uh, evaluate it and I gave them access. And that's great because if you get people on your stand who are excited about what they're seeing it tends to create an atmosphere which draws other people who might be potentially interested in what they're seeing round the stand and they come and, and, and come and watch. And if you've got people who are actively praising what they're seeing this is a good moment. About a week later it was time to make my follow-up call. If you given the prospect an evaluation site then the first thing you'll do is to inspect the evaluation site and then give them a call and ask them whether what they'd seen had interested them and how they might like to take it forward. Well sadly not most people know Roland, it doesn't work like that. It's, um, you know, if you've got 25-30% of people that you'd spoken to were interested in some sort of follow-up then generally you'd feel pretty chuffed about the investment you'd made in terms of money and time. And when I examined what they'd been doing they had been preparing some training for people who were going to be building nuclear submarines. Now this was very much not to my taste. How was I going to disentangle myself from this? And I had a really horrible sleepless weekend worrying about this. I still don't really know what would have been the, the most professional course of action. Being professional is about being fair and open with other people. I think that is the principle on which I've always run the business. So I've always wanted to, people to be delighted with what they have purchased from us and I've wanted to work with people on a, on a fair and equal basis. Part of this profession is you don't waste other people's time.
Time is a very precious commodity in life, but it's particularly precious in business because people can put actual numbers against it and say, this has cost me so much money. I had acted precipitously and unprofessionally. I wasted their time they, and I suspected that they would be pretty keen on buying it given that they had put so much effort into their evaluation. And I did actually ask one or two people from the meeting for some time to, to discuss what they thought I should do. Well, first of all, senior people are not easy to track down. So you can't just phone and expect to get hold of somebody. Um, so there's a, kind of, there's a kind of a dance of, you don't want to look desperate to talk to them. But if you miss them three times, the thought might occur to you that maybe it would be prudent to leave your details so that they could call you back. And I think there was something in the flavour or the nature of the way I left my message that gave them a hint as to what I was going to say. And they disengaged themselves from the process. So I never had to talk to them again, and I, but I'm slightly sorry about that. It wasn't I was going to convert them to pacifism or anything. I actually wanted to apologise for the fact that I hadn't treated them as well as I might have done.